सपोज यू आर अ थर्ड ईयर स्टूडेंट एट एस आर सी सी सो मोस्ट ऑफ द थर्ड ईयर्स वुड जॉइन मी इन द माइंड सेट दैट दिस इज द टाइम यू नो वेर वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ ऑप्शन वी कैन ऑप्ट फॉर प्लेसमेंट और वी कैन डू हायर स्टडीज और वी कैन डू वी कैन परस्यू सी ए एट्सट्रा एट्सट्रा बट एट टाइम्स इट हैपन्स दैट आर विशन और आर गोल अबाउट लाइफ इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैट ऑफ आर पेरेंट्स have you ever come across a situation where your goals are not in line with your parents and sure. is it okay to you know kind of go against them see they had goals and goals i had none so i never came across such a thing <laughs> they had many goals so uh, my father being a physician is a very good man and academically all his life he's been at the top and he's a physician in india we have a malice that first thing is you become a doctor if you cannot you become an engineer if you cannot then then only you end up in commerce <laughs> at least in the previous generation <laughs> in the when we are growing up that is the thing So obviously his dream is I should become a doctor. I hope he does. He's not on the web listening to me, <laughs> because he he studied in such a way that he didn't study because for him it was a passion. He lost his mother when he was four years of age, and she died of tuberculosis. So though he's from a very large business family, he committed that he will become a doctor. because somewhere a four year old boy felt that if there was a good doctor the mother would have lived so he committed that he wants to become a doctor for him being a doctor was not a profession it was like his religion he he lived like that so naturally he wanted all the four siblings all his four children rather to become doctors first one didn't become sec second one didn't become third one didn't become i got caught at the age of 10 or 11 i clearly told him see one thing is i'm never going to be a doctor please don't pin your hopes on me he showed me all his notes piles of notes that he has kept about his studies and he said i've kept all this so that one of you will become a doctor well all three went different ways and me going nowhere i am only interested in biology means i am interested in the jungle not in dissecting something just looking and observing things so a time came when i finished my this is this is not a good example you asking me questions okay i finished my uh, what is today called as plus 2 is it what do you call this hmm? 12th at that time it was called as pre university course i finished my 12th standard mm, and uh, i decided i will not go to the university by then i had cycled across southern india i had seen more life than most people would have seen i had done some small tradings of this and that and earned a lot of money lot means in those days a few thousand rupees maybe i had 50 60000 rupees when i was 17 years of age all rolled up i didn't know what's banking so rolled it up and put rubber bands and hid it all over so that my brother doesn't steal <laughs> so <laughs> i have a lot of money and i have a bicycle and i want to go to moscow on my bicycle i'm preparing for that so i'm not going to the university for sure in this family you if you fail there's an advantage you don't go to the university if i knew that i would have just failed but the problem is i had passed so i said i won't go to the university i will educate myself I said what not going to the university i said no then uh, once i said i'm not going to the university suddenly i became such an evil in the family 
Everybody started looking at me, what is wrong with you? I said, well, I want to educate myself. How are you going to do it? I said, I think I'm doing it pretty well. But if you insist that I must read and study, then I decided that one year I did something very unique and uncharacteristic of me. That one whole year, just to handle the reaction I got, I wanted… I couldn't understand what are they reacting to? I don't want to go to the university, what is their problem? First of all, I never understood why I should go to the university. Nobody ever told me why I should go to the school. So I went to the Mysore University library every day. When the library opens at nine o'clock, I was there, I was the first customer. When it closed at eight o'clock, I was the last one to get out. Those days, these days many of you are well fed and like that, we were also well fed, but our activity was such, the level of activity was such, I'm always hungry. I would actually eat at that time at least ten times more than what I'm eating today, at least or much more. <laughs> so I'm always hungry, doesn't matter how much I eat, I'm always hungry because my activity levels are such. This one year I went without a lunch. It's not a small thing for you, you can easily go without a lunch. <laughs> but for me who was scrawny and a concave stomach all the time, going without lunch for one year was like a big feat. I just read anything to anything. You know, from Kalidasa to Homer, to popular mechanics, to, to a whole many, many years of National Geographic and all kinds of books of physics, mathematics and astronomy and you take whatever. One whole year, every day, eleven hours a day, I read and read and read. That's the only reading I did. After that, me and books don't go. Then after one year, I realized that just gathering all this information is just waste of time for me. And uh, when the next academic year came, uh, there was drama at home. My mother was crying and said, what are you wasting your life for? We thought you will become this, you will become that. I said, I don't know what I'll become but she put so much pressure, just get into some college. Whether you go there or not, I will not ask, just get into some college. Then I thought through this and I said, okay, I'll do literature, English literature because in this one year I had de developed some appetite for reading literature and poetry. And I myself was writing many, many poems about just about anything. So I joined literature. I went to college and first day a teacher comes and reads a book. Everybody is writing down, kara kara, these days it doesn't make noise, those days fountain pens, kara 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 kara, fifty people are writing kara kara. I don't like this. I said, see, I just looked into the teacher's book, then I saw it is a handwritten book that it's her notes. I said, ma'am, if you give that book to me, I'll make photocopies of this and give it to everybody. You don't have to come, we don't have to come. <laughs> but if you want me to come here, I have a thousand questions. Not thousand, I have millions of questions like a dark cloud, it's hanging around my head. I'm going to ask these questions. If you cannot answer these questions, I cannot sit here. Then I made a deal with all the teachers that they give me attendance and I won't bother them with their questions. <laughs> this deal worked pretty well for three years and I got out. Is this what my father wanted? Definitely not. Why I'm saying this to you is not to simply go against your parents, that's not the point. The point is, this life is precious. Now when you're talking about, what shall I do, shall I do this, shall I do that, is it only about how to, how to earn a living? You must get off that. This is not about… education is not about earning a living. When an earthworm can earn a living, a grasshopper can earn a living, every damn insect, bird and animal can earn a living, a street dog can earn a living, 
what is the big deal about survival with such a big brain? Survival is not the big thing about the human being. Survival has become a problem because you want to survive like somebody else, that's a whole problem. If you want to survive, this is not a problem. My father would ask, how will you make a living? How will you live? What will you earn? I said, if I… if nobody wants to feed me, I'll go into the jungle. And I went into the jungle for weeks and survived very well by myself. Many times I went off into the forest and I just survived off the forest without any food support from anywhere else. So survival is not the issue. What are we going to do with this life? Are we take… going to take this life to full potential or are we going to be those people who are just shit scared of life itself and what will happen to my food, what will happen to my food, what is this? When a street dog is not bothered happily, is wagging his tail and going tuk tuk tuk, what is your problem with such a big brain, I'm asking? You don't educate for survival. You educate because you want to expand your horizons. You want to make this life into a worthwhile life. That's what that matters. So will it be in conflict with many people? Of course it will be, because they think you won't make it. I must tell you this now that you asked this question. This was uh, almost thirty-four years ago. There was a person who was like a godfather to my wife at that time. She was still working in a bank. I was on my… living on my motorcycle, traveling all over the place. I would teach here and there once in three, four months, but rest of the time I'm just riding, simply riding across the country for no purpose. So one day I came to Bangalore and I went to their home because of the entire night I've been riding. I went to their home and I wanted to shower and have some food and then go pick up my wife from the bank. Then I showered and ate well and then this man sat in front of me and said, See, I know somebody in the Bangalore Development Authority, in this particular extension there are some house sites available, you must get yourself a house site. I said, what? Me buy a house site for what? I live on the motorcycle, why will I buy a house site? He said, no, you're married, you can't be like this, you need to have a house someday. You must buy a house site. I said, don't you tell me this, that if I wanted to buy real estate, I wouldn't buy a house site, I will buy a town, okay? <laughs> so that's not my interest at all. I'm not going to buy a house site, please don't try to push me. Thank you for the meal and the shower, but then he looked at me hopelessly and asked, how long will you go on like this? I said, as long as my marbles roll, that's about it, that's how… that's how long everybody goes about in their life. Then I went out and I didn't see… and I said, met him here and there, for about eighteen years I had not met. In 2017 <laughs> see the problem is just this, people recognize… people value something only because it's recognized by somebody, that means they're blind, isn't it? If you look at this, you must know this is light. You look at this and you don't know what it is and I said, see, see, that is light. That means what? You're blind, isn't it? Yes or no? So after eighteen years of no contact, he called me in 2017 because the central… Uh, the government gave me this Padma Vibhushan. He called me and he said, I never thought your marbles will roll this far <laughs> So unfortunately, a whole lot of people can see light only when you say it is light, otherwise they can't see it. Don't go by such people, whoever they may be, doesn't matter who they are.